Aviation history was made May 26 when testers from Edwards Air Force Base and the Air Force Research Laboratory successfully launched an X-51A Wave Rider scramjet off the California coast. Based on preliminary data, after booster separation at 50,000 feet, the air-breathing scramjet vehicle approached Mach 5 at an altitude of more than 60,000 feet. The previous record was 12 seconds in the NASA X-43. Mr. Johnny Armstrong is the chief engineer of the hypersonic combined test force at Edwards and has worked for more than 30 years in the development of scramjet technology. This was a, a, a repeat experience for me to uh, be a part of a control room activity of a hypersonic vehicle and uh, this one you approach with a lot of anticipation. You know how complicated, how challenging this particular trajectory was on the X-51 to fly into a very high dynamic pressure to get the conditions to start a scramjet. So this was a very much a challenge, something we were concerned about and it made it successfully to that point, started that engine and flew for a significant period of time at a Mach number approaching Mach 5. The X-51 was carried aloft to 50,000 feet by an Edwards B-52 Stratofortress over the Point Magoo Naval Air Warfare Center Sea Range. Flying at that altitude was just one of the challenges the B-52 crew had to face during the mission. Well, uh, to get it into the launch box, we're at the upper envelope uh, edges for the B-52. We're at 50,000 feet. We're flying it uh, near our max mock in a place where our aircraft doesn't really control very well. Very rare air. So uh, for us, the, the, the making the exact parameters you know, within plus or minus a couple of knots or within a few hundred feet of where we needed to be was extremely challenging for the B-52. We had to fly the aircraft at minimum fuel. So every time, every minute that we're up there, we're just uh, a few short minutes away from having to land immediately because we don't have enough gas to make it all the way back to Edwards. So uh, small changes in the uh, flight path or changes in our direction from anyone or any kind of conflict because we're flying through LA Center's airspace, which is full of a lot of airline traffic, uh, could have ended the mission. So it was, uh, you're always on the razor's edge for fuel, which I thought was uh, a unique challenge to the program as well. Major Sean Selly was one of the two navigators in the B-52. While he was responsible for releasing the X-51 at the right moment, he says that it was a team effort that made it all happen. Many hours of hard work and everyone from the control room personnel to the maintenance uh, to the cast of hundreds uh, supporting this mission to the engineers uh, making it all happen for that one moment in time. Right after the mission, that team started the task of reviewing all the flight data. We're starting to look at data today. We just are real anxious to get in there to look at some of the strange things that you see along a flight like this, to try to explain them where you need to make changes. You got to define those changes to get ready to go and do it again. Lieutenant Colonel Todd Venema is the director of the Hypersonic Combined Test Force. Well, everything we do at Edwards is flight test and a lot of what we do is weapon systems and, and the, the short to middle term helping the warfighter more directly. This is more of a long term thing. The things that we're working on in the scramjet engine are going to benefit the warfighter uh, 15, 20 years from now when we're able to utilize this technology to bring new capabilities to the fight. It's exciting though, it's exciting to do research. It's the type of thing that we read about when we wanted to become test pilots. You know, Chuck Yeager breaking the sound barrier and the X-15 program and, and those types of things. And it's, it's, it's really terrific to be a part of a program like that. Okay. Don Waldman, Edwards Air Force Base, California. Okay, I got him now. I got him now. We're fine.